Oh, okay. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm as ready as I'm going to be this week, mate, yeah. <laughs> what is happening, guys? My name is Chris. I'm Paul. And welcome back to another episode of That Tattoo Show. So, uh, do you know something? Go on, then. We've, we've hit 2,000 subscribers. Yeah, we did, didn't we? We were talking about it last week. Wouldn't it be great if we did hit 2,000 subscribers by the time we put out our one-year episode? And uh, sure enough, we did. So that was nice. Nice one. Thank you very much, everybody. Well done. 2,000 in a year. Doesn't seem like a lot, but 2,000 on YouTube is actually really... It's like a lot of work to get it, you know. It's quite yeah, hard oh, to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. While I think about that, if you look at our stats, I don't know if you do any of this, but because I worked in marketing, I do. 71% um, of people that watch our content aren't subscribed. So if you what? are watching it and you're not subscribed, yeah, um, do us subscribe. a favour, hit the, hit the button. If you want to know why, go back and um, watch last week's episode and, you know, it's good for you. Do it. It don't cost anything. It just helps us out. All it takes is moving that finger, just going... Just got to do that. But people are watching, so that's what's the most important thing. People are watching it. So before we do another 20 minute intro, here's the intro. So, uh, what is on your mind, Paul? Do you know what? This week, man, do you ever have them weeks when you feel like you're 10 minutes late for everything you do? Yes, every single day since I've come back to work. Oh, man, like, yeah, since I got back to work, I feel like I'm 10 minutes late for everything I'm doing. Mm. And uh, I'm still, like, just not struggling, but I'm still trying to get, you. and I'm sure you guys are having this, I'm still trying to get back to balancing my work life, my home life, yeah. the other creative projects that I do. Well, actually, I want to mention this to you guys, um, because this is what I've been doing this morning. I've just sat and wrote the written accompaniment, 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 I don't know. Uh, I've just sat and written all of the words to go with the brother tutorials that I'm doing. So like you might have noticed on the channel, every Thursday for the last few weeks and for the next few weeks, and, and it will happen on a Thursday in future, I put out a brother video. So it's a tip or a trick or, you know, which one to buy or, you know, how to install them. But some people are not, you know, they're not visual learners, you know what I mean? So some people prefer to, to read a manual and kind of go through the steps and other people prefer to follow along on the computer and sort of do it and watch it as it goes along. I don't know which one you prefer. Um, I, I've got to be honest, I prefer to watch somebody do it on screen and just copy along. But for the people that, that want the kind of written version and want to be able to kind of go through it step by step and, and, you know, and all that sort of stuff, and the, the written stuff, I can write more words and it's, you know, it's not a two hour long video. Uh, I've just finished doing it. So probably by the time you read this, all of those will have been sorted out because it takes me a minute to sort Watch. them out on, for the blog. The what? By the time you read this, they will all be on. Oh, uh, yeah, see, I'm getting, I'm getting my <laughs> medias mixed up. Yeah, so by the time you watch this, there'll yeah. be something on my blog, which I'll, I'll put along the bottom there. Uh, there'll be something on my blog for you to read if you would prefer to read it. I think we should have a That Tattoo Show blog. Yeah, we should do. Yeah. yeah. But that's going to involve me setting it up because given that I've been waiting clue. for you to, to at least set up some web space for your website for over a year, then uh, oh, I mate. think... I just what we'll on. do for now is we'll just put it on my blog. We'll put that tattoo show blog on my blog, and then we won't worry about it. I uh, I, I keep going on to that Squarespace, right? And I'm just like, Ugh. yeah. I just I, I just I, I I I'm not a website making person. Do you mean? I've got too many websites. But, you know, it is too many is. websites to worry about because I've got I've got my own website plus the shop site. If you're not a visual learner and you're a reader and you prefer to read blog posts, go over head over to the blog. There's some other stuff on the blog as well, some tattoo history stuff and a few other bits and pieces. And in the near future, there might even be some guest review posts by a chap called Chris who, who's on a thing called That Tattoo Show. You know, we'll see how it goes. Maybe. Because yeah, he hasn't no. got his own website. I might set my own up and I can... Well, in all fairness, Paul did see a year ago that he would help me set a website up. Yeah, but I can only help you once you've, start, once you've started the ball rolling, mate. Well, what do you want me to do? Sign up to Squarespace and then yeah. just give it Sign to it you? Sign it up and give it to me, yeah. Right. Basically, that's, that's what we do. And then, we'll do and I, I will, once we're doing that, I'll, um, I'll film all of my adventures in Squarespace and see if... Uh, 
see if it helps you get a website. If you're in the same position as Chris, I guess um, <laughs> you just don't know where to start. It might help you get started. We'll we'll do that. We'll do that. And uh, yeah, so yeah, no, but I know what you mean here. Like, it just not enough time. Not enough time, and man. And shit like that. It's just been just been one of those weeks. Just been one of them weeks. Yeah. You know, it's like somebody was saying. What? No. no have, we, have, we got a, have we got a delay, or are you just interrupting? No, I'm just interrupting. Like? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was no, going to uh, say to you, like, how are you feeling after your COVID jab? Um, do you know what? It fucking wiped me out for a few yeah, days. Yeah, a lot like, of people have said that. This is the thing, though. Like, I was speaking to somebody about it, and everyone was like, oh, see, I had my COVID jab, and uh, I, I rested. And I was just trying to explain to him, it's like, the day before my COVID jab, I left the house at 8 o'clock in the morning, went to work. By the time I finished work, and I mean, like, finished tattooing and stuff, I was back in the house. So I finished tattooing, filmed the review, back home by, like, half past nine in the night. Then I was editing until one o'clock in the morning. Then I had my COVID jab at 20 past nine. Half past ten, I started driving up to see you, filmed an episode of the show, drove back home by six by six o'clock. Then I was drawing and editing again till one or two in the, one to two in the morning, up at half past seven. So like I just didn't stop, and I, like my days are literally half seven till fucking one o'clock in the morning, and I feel like the whole having the jab and just keeping on going, I felt fucking exhausted. Come Saturday, I was like, yes. <laughs> it's like, oh, I've got, like, time to fucking rest. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I've got time to rest. And, uh, no, I didn't have time to rest because my dog stole some of my daughter's chocolate, then ate loads of dry fruit. So I was up to five o'clock in the morning with the dog. That was just shitting oh, everywhere. Oh, mate, honestly. Well, it's, it just, that's kind of, if you tattoo, you're probably sitting here nodding, nodding at the TV. We, well, I think I'm, we're so lucky. We are lucky. We're so lucky that we get to draw on people for a living. We are you know, lucky. We're so lucky but that is, we spend like fucking 18 hours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, we're lucky, but there is, you know, it all comes with, a, it all comes with, you know, its own, um, its own things that you have to just get used to. And I'd, I'd forgotten them. You know what I mean? I've got my second jab. By the time you, um, by the time you watch this, I'll have had my second jab. So I've got mine on, I've got mine on Saturday. So, uh, wait and see what happens. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my jab in the morning, my second one. And then, uh, I'm, I'm coming in tattooing. Stupid of me really, but that's because, you know, I'm one of the sheeple, you know, I wear masks and I, I do things like get, um, inoculations. I mean, how stupid. Interestingly enough, right, you know, you, you spoke, speaking about sheeple and stuff, like I've been chatting to a few friends online and I feel bad for everybody at the minute because like there's so much misinformation online that, uh, do you know I mean, people are sending videos with like half truths in it or, you know, it's only certain things are left to steer narratives and it's like a re makes you feel like it's like a really troubling time to be in. Like I got a, I've, I've got a, a close, a very close family friend that uh, lives in a different country and they've so far down the rabbit hole, right? Like it, it's not even funny. Like, but, but you know, you can post, you know, you can, you can uh, fact check or just Google search everything that they put online and everything within five minutes, you find that like, it's all nonsense. Like, but it's, it's a tough time to be in. Like. Chris, you know, uh, the big yes. problem is we live in a thing called the post truth era. So now apparently how you feel about something is as valid as a fact. I, I would always argue cause I'm from the pre, pre, pre post truth era. Uh, I would always argue that a fact is a fact and how you feel is how you feel. It's not as valid as a fact. The sky is mm. factually blue. If you feel like it's green, it's fucking not and you're wrong. It doesn't matter how, how strongly let's, you let, feel let's, it, you know? uh, let's not go down that fucking avenue, right? Because, oh my God, that's a fucking kind of worms you don't want to open up. You can't, um, you can't convince people. It's like with the Magna Carta stuff, you know. Once people have made their mind up that that's the way it is, they're just, all they're looking for is confirmation. You know, they're just looking for confirmation. And you won't find you it. it. It's like fucking, you know, they're just zealots. You know, it's almost like the times of the Luddites. Look, Google them, you know, the people that smashed up technology at the beginning of the first industrial revolution. They, they just smashed up technology and wouldn't have it. Basically wanted to go back to living in horse and carts because they thought all technology was evil and dangerous. Who knows, you know, they're, they're, yeah. people are like that, you know, they just, so they're so lost in this crazy ass world of conspiracies that they, they will with a straight face tell you that lizard people run the earth and I'm like you're fucking mental they're like yeah lizard people uh, are the reason why we're in this position with the whole fucking ink situation <laughs> maybe, well maybe you know if you put if you 
if you take a fourth dimensional representation of a lizard in the third dimension and it decides to get a tattoo and uh, it's blue or green, maybe it, maybe the lizard ink, the lizard skin can't take that particular ink or something, or maybe the third, yeah, maybe they, maybe they haven't worked out how to project blue and green from the fourth dimension to the third dimension, so all, they can't have blue and green tattoos, so they're trying to get rid of them so they blend in better, you know. Possibly, possibly, and you know, apparently we're sheep, because uh, we, what do you say, what was it? Uh, we, we, we haven't started a petition. Yeah, we are, oh yeah, because there was one. already a petition. <laughs> I'll put it down there for you. In, in all seriousness, we do actually need to sign that petition. I've signed it. Everyone yeah, signed we it. should we should sign it. Maybe, maybe it'll help. Personally, I'm not sure that it will, but we've we've got some um, some stuff coming up about the ink later. Yeah. So maybe maybe my opinion will change before the end of the show. You know, we'll see what happens. Too much misinformation out there. Uh, don't believe yeah. everything you read. Don't believe everything that people tell you, including us. Yeah, including us. Fact check us. One thing I will say as well, uh, the video we did do about the inks and the pigments and things like that, and you know, people make it from scratch. Um, we are going to do another video about the whole side of the pre-dispersed stuff and people are buying in because there's nothing wrong with companies getting in pre-mixed inks. The poor thing that I was discussing and the point I was trying to make is I think the reason, one of the reasons why we're in this position is because there are so many companies out there that just don't have the knowledge that manufacturers have. So we will be doing another video just to kind of touch on that topic. Or oh, possibly if you're buying predisposed, and I agree with you, there's nothing wrong. There's like I said, like I said in that episode, there's lots of examples in other industries of, of that kind of behaviour. There's nothing weird or underhanded going on. Possibly if you buy in your predispersed inks and then you're asked for the science of one of the components, because you're a couple of steps removed from it and you don't have the actual powdered pigment, it might that might be what's caused the delay or the breakdown in communication. This is all we're saying, that it might be a problem. If you're buying, yeah. you know, ink already in a liquid form and somebody asks you for the data on the powder, it might be that you can't do it or that you can't get the science because maybe if you're only bottling ink, you don't need scientists. This is what we're trying to find out for you, you know, trying to sort of clear that up. Yeah, and you're relying on other people then. You're relying on other people to kind of give you the facts. So say, for example, right, you know, we might be in the position of people saying... No, you got all these ink companies saying there's no other alternative. No, are they saying that because the one person that makes it for them is telling them that there's no alternative? But then other manufacturers out there that actually make them scratch have the scientists and the labs to try and find that alternative. That's where we stand. So that that's the the thing. Like, so we're gonna cover that in another video. Yeah, yeah. We were supposed to, this week, we, this just so you know, we were supposed to be speaking to a chap called Mario Barth who owns Intens Inks, if you use Intens Inks. Uh, we haven't managed to pin Mario down for a time because we've got, you know, time differences. He's really busy, we're really busy. So we're still trying to figure out the best time to do that interview, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But you reached out to Mario and Eternal and Indeed. to a mate of mine, Lou, from... Uh, world famous ink and Lou did actually get back to you didn't they? Interesting yes I sent three emails last week to obviously Intense World Famous and uh, Eternal um, the only one I, I, what, what I basically sent them out like an open invitation to come on to the show um, and I also said so I'm going to be reading from something from the side here. so I said uh, basically uh, for people that don't have the time or don't fancy coming on our show I'm also sending questions and hopefully they could answer them uh, and I sent the same questions to everybody. I gotta say, the first person to come back instantly with all the answers to the questions was Lou. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. The other two companies didn't. I had the general manager from Eternal say that he's gonna look into this uh, and hopefully come back with some answers. Um, and then obviously, with the with the Mario Bath side of things, with Intense, they, we're trying to organise the interview. Now we're going to ask these questions. So, um, would you like to know what I asked? First of all, let's clear a, let's clear a few things up, just in case you don't know. World Famous is an ink company that used to be based in New. G no, hang on, sorry, that used to be based in Long Island, on the uh, east coast of America. They moved to a new facility, I think probably two or three years ago now, in North Carolina, where they actually manufacture their own ink there, yes. don't they? They actually take powdered pigment, distilled water, and whatever else they do. Sprinkle of magic. But World Famous is made in North Carolina 
by world famous. Yeah. So they, they're not re, they're not rebottling. They're actually making their own inks. It might be why Lou was able to get back to you very quickly. What did Lou have to say? This is the question I asked. Ink companies have known about the potential of a band for over ten years. They have had five years to provide the evidence that proves the ink is safe. Why do you think in that time no one has provided the relevant evidence? Lou come back straight away with, uh, I have known for a few years only, certainly not 10 years. Who knows where any of this was going. We have sent letters asking them not to ban these pigments and asked what we can do to stop it. And they have never gotten a response. So interesting. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. So the second question was following on from that, would the lack of evidence from the industry be because a lot of uh, ink brands aren't actually manufacturers? and lack the ability and knowledge on what they need to do? Because I think that's a fair question. Yeah, it's fair enough. So yeah, it's fair he enough. said, uh, I can't speak for any other ink companies, but we at World Famous are manufacturers. And honestly, a few years ago, we were not in the position we, current, we are currently. We have grown rapidly over the last few years. And now uh, I was able to hire the right people with the right creden credentials to help us with this situation. We have a great team of safety engineers, chemists and chemical engineers working on our team along with our pigment experts. We are working on figuring out what we can do before uh, before the time comes up. I'm thankful and fully back and support Eric Manart and Michael Dirks who started the petition to give us the chance now to provide info on the pigments. There is still a chance. Don't give up on us yet. Click my neck. Ooh. That was a hell of a click. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, the, in case you didn't see the episode, go back and watch it, but I'll just summarise it. The, the, two of the things that are interesting, one of the things that Lou says is really interesting, that the European people haven't got back to them to tell them what science or what they can do to stop the ban. The other thing is, as I, I showed you, in the European Parliament, even the, the chairperson queried why the burden of proof had been reversed, you know, so that instead of proving danger, the ink companies are now expected to prove safety. Uh, unfortunately, because they, they argue that this is for public safety because so many people have, um, have tattoos, I guess, uh, it, it would appear to have gone, it's gone forward and now the ban, it, it will be banned in 2023, right? Well, I'd about to get onto that with another question then. I think what's interesting is that I, I guess it's, you know, the, the great socialist experiment that is Europe, you know, when they, they ban stuff, they even, even whether they know it's safe or not, right? Like, I think, I think ban, it's, it? just ban it. And I think it's one of the dangers of socialism. The, but it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been taken everywhere. Australia looking in, banning it now, fucking UK looking into it. You know, it is what it is. So the next that's question. Because it, but that, that's because that's the problem is that you get one area does it and, it and a lot of other people go, well, they must have looked into it. So we, we should look into it now. Yeah, which is probably why we're in this position because like what you said, an ink company's gone, oh, they're probably going to look into a solution. So let's not bother. But, um, stop. You're not to bother. <laughs> But yeah, so the next question we've got is, moving forward, if the ink brands cannot provide the safety evidence and the ink is banned in 2023, uh, what are companies like yourselves planning on doing regarding alternatives? So Lou responded with, we are working hard on new formulations and changes to continue. Either way, we will do whatever we have to do in order to keep our industry alive. So it's good to know that they are doing whatever they can to keep things yeah. going. Um, I also said, do you think that, do you think companies should be more transparent? By that, I mean, if you advertise as an ink manufacturer, yet you lack the facilities to manufacture the ink from the raw pigment, should companies be more transparent and tell people where the predisposed ink is being made? So he come back to me with, same goes for every industry, my friend. <laughs> Many companies will say they are manufacturers when they are not. This is business. I don't think it's not normal, which it isn't. You know, it, 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 it's, it's quite common. Uh, many companies are private labels in the cosmetics industry, food industry, even in our industry. How many tattoo aftercare companies do you think make their own aftercare products? They put a bit of a laugh on the end. And he's totally right. It, it, it is. 
And this comes into play with certain regulations that are going to be happening in the UK, specifically Wales, where we're being told that we, we, we need to know where our shit is coming from. So if you are an ink brand and you're a private label pigment, you're getting made by somebody else, I still need to know where the fuck that's coming from. Because let's just say if you're getting it made by uh, a, a company in California, uh, you know, I need to know. It's, we might need to know that for, you know, for future law changes and everything. That's interesting. I think Lou's been, Lou's been pretty clear with you, to be honest with you. Although, he, you know, again, in case you don't know, Lou Rubino, who owns World Famous Inc., he's, his family are pretty well connected with tattooing and are no strangers to having to battle the powers that be. I, 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 want to, I don't know, remember exactly what it is, but I know that because they were in Long Island and tattooing was banned for 27 years in New York, I'm sure it was Lou's dad who tattooed on like the steps of some like government building to, to lift no, the ban no, or something cool. like that. I'm sure it was, I mean, it was his dad or his granddad. I, no, I, you'd have to ask Lou. Maybe we'll get Lou on the show, man, and see if we can do it. But he's, he's not, he's actually said he'll come on. You said he'll come on. Cool, we'll get him on. I mean, this is an example of like an, a, like an in, like a, a tattooist owned brand. So, you know, this is a tattoo family that own a brand. So when he's talking about, you know, we'll do whatever we can to save the save our industry, I'm I've got to be honest, I'm more inclined to believe that kind of rhetoric from somebody like Lou, whose family have put the money where the mouth is more, you know, on at least one other occasion. So fair play to him. It's it's awesome, man. It is first it is frustrating that other companies aren't coming. You know, as an ink manufacturer, you should be able to come back with those answers with it. Uh, like the last question I asked him is I was like, lastly, do you manufacture the ink from the raw pigment or is it bought pre-dispersed? Now his answer to that, again, it, it's the same thing of what I said. It's like about it is still okay for people to buy it in pre-dispersed. So he said, we do manufacture from raw pigment. We are rare and have full control over our formulations. But what I believe you and many others don't understand uh, is that it doesn't help if we manufacture from raw pigment. It's the raw pigment that is the issue. And no, we do not make raw pigment and no one in the tattoo industry, cosmetic industry, paint industry, art industry, print industry, or any industry of color uh, does. It only comes from very major chemical manufacturers. It's, uh, it's a big deal. Yet, we do source our raw pigments from the top raw pigment manufacturers to be sure of the quality. That's what's most important. We do tons of testing to be sure we get the right, uh, sorry, to be sure we get the quality we are promised. And he said, let me know if you've got any further questions. And that, like, that's an interesting one, like, because I don't know if you picked up on this, right? When it comes to like the whole uh, giving the information to the European government and whatever, uh, I think I read somewhere, or I think they might have said it in that video, they weren't, some of the ink companies weren't forthcoming with letting them know where they're getting their stuff from. Some pigment manufacturers that maybe make, uh, make that, that make it from, that supply cosmetic grade, they might be more inclined to supply to the tattoo industry. Some ink manufacturers, they buy it via a third party, so the actual pigment manufacturers don't know that they're selling to the tattoo industry, and if they did know they were selling to the tattoo industry, there is that possibility that they would no longer supply the third party, therefore ink would be fucked in general. So there's so many fucking like gray areas as to why we're in this situation, and there's no straight answers, but I'm like massively appreciate the fact that like, literally within five minutes Lou come back with an answer so that that is, that is fucking awesome I mean for, if, if, you, if you think about it the uh, I think actually one of the comments on the on the episode that we did about this somebody was basically exactly right and I can't remember who it is so I'm, I'm sorry I can't remember uh, what, what your username was but somebody actually said that to buy the powder you'd have to buy you know tons of this stuff and to make the the powdered pigment yourself um, is incredibly specialist and also incredibly dangerous at times because you're dealing with a lot of like very dangerous raw materials that are then turned into a not dangerous coloured powder. You know, so, I mean, you know, back in the day, paint, you know, all kinds of colours of paints were massively toxic. You know, I mean, I, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but like in Victorian England, they still used arsenic in, in green ink. So lots of Victorians died because they, they liked green wallpaper and their wallpaper actually killed them because it released arsenic into the That's atmosphere. I know. And the, the other thing is, 
It's things like, um, our, you know our stencil paper, you know the purple stuff that's on the spirit paper, right? When it's, when it's combined with a spirit like that, because that's why it's called spirit paper, because they, they, they put it into a spirit-based solution, so like an alcohol solution to reduce it. By the time we get it in paper form, it's perfectly safe. But if you buy that purple powder on its own, the fucking warning messages all over it. You basically have to wear a hazmat suit to take it and then pour alcohol over it because it is incredibly carcinogenic until it's in a solution. And then it's fine. It's the same with um, certain food colorings that are used in certain stencil priming fluid. The, the actual pigment, the food coloring pigment itself, in its powdered form, is very, very fucking carcinogenic. It's very bad for you. But as soon as it's mixed with with the, with, with fluids and certain fluids or whatever, it's fine. But yeah, it's fucking it is crazy. So it doesn't surprise it doesn't surprise me that people that manufacture ink buy that ink because otherwise, you know, I mean, I, I would imagine that would be cost prohibitive to have to make your own to then turn into tattoo ink because the the turnaround on it isn't nearly enough, you know, or the, the markup on it isn't enough. You but another thing as well, like, so I, again, this goes back to me saying that making the whole statement of like, uh, uh, if, you're a, if you're an actual manufacturer, you're going to be far more well educated on this topic than just people who sell a brand uh, and, and just rebottle it. I th I'm sure somebody was telling me that um, Electric Ink in Brazil they've got somebody working for them that used to work for BASF, B-A-S-F, which is a, a chemical company that make the pigment. They worked for them for 20 years. So they've got a former employee of one of these chemical companies working for them with their, you know, doing their, making their formulas and stuff. So they, again, company like that is, a company like that is going to have far more knowledge on what they need to do over, you know, Joe Bloggs, who's, hasn't got that and like i said it sucks because you know realistically we shouldn't be in this position thanks very much lou for answering the questions if you'd like us to interview lou from world famous comment down below so we can see it you know just comment get lou on the show get lou on the show hashtag get lou on the show hashtag get lou yeah <laughs> on, on our instagram and also our instagram yeah just comment so that he can he can see that you know you'd like to hear what he has to say because i think that'd be an interesting uh, interesting conversation we'll see how it yeah whatever uh we are rabbiting and uh, digressing as we always do yeah. uh, i hope you've enjoyed this episode i hope it's given you a little bit more information about the ink ban and some other bits and pieces sorry we're knackered we haven't had anywhere near enough sleep this week we'll have some sleep and we'll be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for ready for next sunday morning Chatting shit. this has been that tattoo show and i've been paul yes <laughs> <laughs> let me do that again this has been That Tattoo Show. I'm Paul. I'm Chris, and we'll see you uh, next week. Yeah, we'll see you next yeah. week. Take care, guys. Bye.